Yes. The mustache was a one. Obvious preface. Bring this to your endocrinologist before you just get out there and start doing what I recommend. We said it, that's out of the way. (laughs) One newish change that the FA requires and one tip for better controlling diabetes. Diabetes. I know I've used it before. No, I'm going to keep it in there. They'll like it. YouTube comments have always been clean and courteous. The first thing, the first thing, the FAA's new-ish requirement. If you are using a Dexcom CGM, an additional document that you need to include is your AGP, right? So when you uh, you go on Dexcom Clarity to uh, to download a report, uh, you click on AGP as well. Stands for Ambulatory Glucose Profile, you think? Yes. Uh, And it includes um, basically a a bunch of pre-calculated data that the FAA now requires for certification for diabetics. So you gotta include that. I'm just, I was debating whether or not to like shit talk. I won't. (laughs) It's it's just like, you could calculate- Nope. Okay, so that's the thing you gotta include now. Make sure you include that in your reports. To the fall. Next thing I want to talk about is a concept that when it occurs to you, will be very useful. Again, talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor. Mine's nice. I don't know. Maybe you could be friends too. Look, I don't want to run your life. <laughs> Burb. She the first right brother. It's just a dinosaur that got small and grew feathers. The concept is this. Diabetes is a game of variables. I'm going to try to keep this simple because it bleeds into so many different aspects of life. But I want to boil down this base concept for you, this little nugget, so that you can have it and then and then think on it in your day-to-day life. I'll give a couple examples of sort of how to extrapolate that concept into, like, daily examples. But it's a game of variables. And the more variables you introduce... The more complex the landscape, the more difficult it is to keep your blood sugar from fluctuating. Here's a concrete example of that. A normal person with a functioning pancreas in America. eats three meals a day. And they can do that because they're normal. We hate them, we love them. I'm just kidding. But what happens when you eat three meals a day? Think about it this way. Each meal in the day is about three to four hours apart. After you've consumed a meal and given yourself a bolus, and waited for your blood sugar to stabilize, how long does that take? About as long as it takes to wait for the next meal. So you're instantly reintroducing another variable. And even assuming that you got your dosage right and your blood sugar went down to 100 for breakfast, for example, you're really gonna do that three times a day? Something to think on. Here's how it's helped me personally. When it comes to flying a plane, I'm preparing my body. (laughs) Sounded better in my head. I'm looking after my blood sugar about 24 hours in advance. I do that by reducing variables so that I know by the time I get in that cockpit, my sugars are going to be stable. But if I plan to fly one morning and I go out and eat a big breakfast with a bunch of carbs, how long is it going to be until I get in that plane? Maybe an hour and a half, two hours? Your body has not stopped processing insulin by the time you're going and doing that. Your sensitivities are different. Your body has stopped using cortisol in the morning from when you first woke up. Your liver might still be releasing its glycogen stores right into your blood. You get it? That's the concept, fairly simple. I'll let you extrapolate as you need so that you can discover what that means and how to apply that to your life. If it helps, I'll give you an example for me. Here's what my day looks like. I wake up early, I go work out. When I come back and I eat breakfast, my breakfast is pretty much zero carb. It's two eggs mixed with maybe a little hot sauce or curry or something from last night. In other words, oftentimes I'm not even injecting insulin for it. Then I go to work or go fly or whatever. Throughout the day, if I get hungry, I'll eat small snacks and bonus points if it's something you don't have to inject for, which I usually don't because I work a manual labor job and if I inject insulin and I'm running around, well, guess what happens? Insulin sensitivity goes way up and 
crash, and then I come home, and at the end of the day, that's when I introduce the big variable, and that's dinner. Your body still needs carbs, but it's at a time when I know I'm finally going to be sedentary, and my insulin sensitivity is more or less predictable. So I guess two takeaways here. One, diabetes is a game of variable management. And two, you should be thinking about what your blood sugar is going to do when you fly in advance. Figure out what that looks like for you. Uh, right, this is my first video in a while, so if you want to know more about that and why I really haven't been posting anything, I uploaded another video uh, at the same time as this one. You can go check it out and watch me apologize to you. Um, that kind of sounded flippant. It's not. It, it's sincere. But yeah, go check it out. Or don't. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what uh um more hopefully to come soon hopefully to come soon yeah good job